Hello and welcome. I'm Adam Thompson, and in this discussion on 12 lead electrocardiography, we're going to talk about reciprocal changes. So, what are reciprocal changes? Well, first, let's talk about again our contiguous leads. And because to understand reciprocal changes, you have to understand the concept behind contiguous leads. And contiguous leads are the, just those leads that look at the same area of the heart. So they're kind of the camera angles of view looking at the heart. So 2, 3, and AVF here, these are our inferior leads. Uh, 1 and AVL are both lateral leads along with V5 and V6. V1 and V2 are our septal leads. And then V3 and V4, they look at the anterior wall of the heart. So they're the anterior leads. And we get that based on the, you know, the lead placement on the, around the heart uh, indicates where uh, that, that section of the heart that those leads are looking at. Um, it helps us identify different infarction patterns and, and uh, understand you know, if the patient's experiencing a STEMI, an ST elevated myocardial infarction. So here we said two, three, and AVF. Those are our inferior leads, right? So let's just look at the limb leads in our frontal plane and see how they look at the heart. So 2, 3, and AVF, this is called the hexaxial reference system. It just kind of takes uh, each lead and puts the positive electrode, uh, you know, and the negative electrode on there and kind of gives you the angle of view that they're looking at from, from. So 2, 3, and AVF, these are all called the inferior leads. And if you notice something that they have in common is the positive electrode is down here on the bottom. So that's where it looks from, okay? So the camera is pointed this way towards the bottom of the heart there. All right, so the way that these leads pick up, uh, you know, uh, tracings is any wave of depolarization moving towards the positive electrode, so towards the camera, it's going to show up as a positive deflection on your EKG tracing, and any depolarization or uh, electrical conduction moving away from that positive electrode is going to show up as a negative uh, wave or complex on that tracing. So, 2, 3, and AVF, those are all inferior. So, let's say we had uh, some ST elevation, ST segment elevation in the inferior leads in, in these 2, 3, and AVF. Well, what would our reciprocal leads be? Well, those leads, the reciprocal leads are the ones with the positive electrodes that are on the opposite side of the heart, okay? And we consider the most reciprocal leads to be AVL and lead 3. Those, I mean, I know it's not exactly opposite, but they are furthest away from each other uh, in their angles of view. So in AVL and lead one even, uh, what might we see? We might see the reciprocal change we call ST depression, okay, ST depression in those leads. So whenever you have ST elevation and the leads facing the injury, you might have ST segment depression in the leads opposite of that or the reciprocal leads. And which leads are reciprocal to which? Um, well, some leads like V1 and V2, they don't traditionally have reciprocal leads. However, uh, on a non-traditional 12 lead, you could create V7, V8, and V9. Sometimes we call that a 15 lead EKG. And all you're doing is you're taking your traditional leads and uh, placing them to acquire a posterior 12 lead. So V7, V8, and V9 would be a posterior wall view uh, or, or posterior 12 lead. Anterior leads, V3 and V4, they don't have any traditional reciprocal leads. However, V3 and V4 are the anterior leads and, and a lot of those anterior wall infarctions extend beyond just V3 and V4 into the septum, into the lateral wall, and you may see reciprocal changes when they are the, the more extensive, larger uh, myocardial infarctions. The lateral leads, uh, 1, AVL, V5, and V6, we say that 2, 3, and AVF are inferior to them. Or I'm sorry, reciprocal to them, they are the inferior leads. And then 2, 3, and AVF, only 1 and AVL are their reciprocal leads, typically because with a lot of those inferior wall infarcts, you get uh, extension into the low lateral wall. So you'll actually have ST elevation in V5 and V6 with those inferior wall infarcts, so you couldn't possibly have reciprocal changes there. And I'll show you an example of that. And then the posterior leads, V7, V8, and V9, obviously V1 and V2 would be reciprocal to those. So let's look at this example here, and this is an inferior wall infarct, right? Because we have ST segment elevation in leads two, three, and AVF. And those are your inferior leads, and you should know that, okay? And if I have ST elevation in my inferior leads, immediately what I do is look at AVL 
for reciprocal changes. Because remember, leads 3 and AVL are the most two reciprocal leads on a 12 EDKG. So in AVL, sure enough, I do have ST segment depression. You have enough right there to say that this is a STEMI. There's no uh, mimic or any pattern that's going to mimic this uh, besides maybe uh, an electrolyte derangement. And of course, your patient presentation is going to help you identify that. Um, so you have enough right there to say that this is an inferior wall MI. There's other changes on here. And I'm going to stick to, we're not going to talk about the rhythm or anything like that. We're going to stick to talking about the reciprocal changes. But you may see over here in V1 and V2, you have some ST segment depression, even all the way down to V3. And you can ignore this. That's just artifacts. So you can ignore that for now. But just look at this ST segment depression, V1 through V3. What is that reciprocal to? Well, uh, the more you learn about uh, MI patterns the more you, and, and coronary circulation, you might learn that the right coronary artery provides blood flow to the inferior wall and in most people, the posterior wall. And that's what you're seeing is that reciprocal, uh, the reciprocal changes of a posterior wall infarct. So to see the, the changes pointing that to that posterior wall, you'd have to do that non-traditional 15 lead, uh, V7, V8, and V9. And those are your posterior leads. Okay, looking at this even further, and I see an injury pattern over here in the low lateral leads, um, just as I promised, uh, I, I told you I'd show you an example of an inferior wall MI with lateral extension, and that's what we have here is that RCA kind of wraps around to the lateral wall, providing some blood flow to that low lateral wall as well. Here's an example of a septal wall infarct, and we know that the septal leads are V1 and V2. Okay, so that's where we have our ST segment elevation. And now traditionally, you won't have reciprocal changes just based on that alone. So then what am I seeing over here in 2, 3, and AVF? I'm seeing some ST segment depression. Well, that's reciprocal to this infarct that's beginning to occur in these high lateral leads. Okay, so uh, remember, 2, 3, and AVF are reciprocal to those high lateral leads. V1 and V2, uh, they're reciprocal to the posterior leads, which you typically don't have on a traditional 12 EDCG. Here's an anterior wall infarct, anterior wall infarct. And in this, we know that the anterior wall is V3 and V4, and that's where you have your changes. And there's no true reciprocal leads to that, so you don't see any reciprocal changes on this 12 EDCG. However, you do see maybe even more changes in V2, and that should be something that I mentioned, is that any two uh, precordial leads or V leads, right? any of these V leads, V1 through V6, if they're in sequence to each other, they are also contiguous. So you could say that V2 and V3 are also contiguous. Okay, so that would be uh, an example of an anteroseptal infarct. And then here's a lateral wall uh, myocardial infarction. And it, again, it's over here in the high lateral wall, leads one in AVL. And we remember that if we see changes in AVL, uh, we're immediately going to look over at lead three, and we do, in fact, see some reciprocal changes in all of the inferior leads. So you have enough to identify that here we have an acute myocardial infarction. Additionally, just like that last uh, septal wall infarct we have uh, that had high lateral changes, with this high lateral infarct, we see septal wall changes. Okay, so you can now identify that as a pattern that is uh, relatively common.